In an earlier video, numbered opinion 28 in my list, I had said that the West wants to sell arms and ammunition to India. And that has come true in today's news. The Prime Minister is in the US and India and the US have signed an agreement by which India will make jet fighter engines with US firms, with the US firm. Well, that way the US gets to sell arms and ammunition to India and reduces India's dependence on Russia for that. Further, it strengthens, as I had said, India's capability to stand up to China. Now, they say they will make the jet fighter, fighter jet engines in India, but chances are that in the first few years, most of the key parts at least will come from the US. So it's really just US exports to India. And later on, even when the parts, etc., are made in India, there will be money flowing back to the US. So it's surely a win for the US, and it may also be good for India in the long run to get this technology. But note that this is a defense deal. It's not a commercial deal. So we really don't know what the economics are. And it may not matter much because for national security, economic considerations are not critical. And I understand that. Still, it's part of the effort of the US and the Western countries to sell equipment to India, including defense equipment. And that is clear. A second deal is really just selling equipment to India. And this is selling intelligence drones. Um, the deal is said to be worth $3 billion. India will buy the drones. They are for intelligence. Uh, exactly what they will be used for, it's not something that I can say or understand. But anyway, it's another export of the US into the Indian market, which is not consumer goods and it is not consumer services. Rather, it is something that's a government to government deal. The third deal I want to talk about is that a US company, Micron Technology, will set up a semiconductor facility in India to make semiconductors. It's going to be quite a substantial investment, $800 million. And it's a way, as I said, of having a China plus one or de-risking China. So instead of making the things in China, make it in China, but also open up another part of the supply chain. And again, it's good for India because India gets experience and knowledge, uh, though initially there will be trouble uh, just as Apple found out when they started making iPhones in Tamil Nadu, that the yield was not at all up to uh, what it was in China. In fact, it was rather poor. So there may be initial trouble because Indian firms aren't quite used to the same level of precision and technology, or maybe they are by now. It doesn't matter. But nevertheless, it's also clear that semiconductors are not high tech. Semiconductors to be made in India are pretty routine now, and it's not high tech. It's just that they need to be made somewhere. And instead of relying on China alone, uh, the US has decided to have a China plus one or de-risk China policy. And this is part of that. So what I'm trying to say is that what I had said yesterday about what the West wants from India has come true today. Now, of course, it hasn't come true today in the sense that all the decisions were taken today. No, the decisions were taken some time back and slowly they have been finalized and they were finalized in time to announce when uh, Mr. Modi would visit the US and it would be announced as part of his deal. And quite a bit of it is a government to government deal even though Micron Technology is a private firm. The other two are essentially government to government deals. So it's very clear as to what the West wants from India. India, they want India's market, including for defense, and they want some manufacturing in India so that they don't have to fully depend upon China. Okay, that's it for today. Bye for now. I'll be back with another economic thought soon.